evaluation of pelvic masses in females with MRA along with HPA correlation. Background and objectives of the study, pelvic mass lesions are most common among women of all age groups, but more common among reproductive age. Differential diagnosis of pelvic mass is complex. The main objective of this study is to qualify the diagnostic yield of MRI with HPA correlation helps to narrow down the differential diagnosis in patients suspected to be suffering from pelvic masses and guide the appropriate management. The purpose of this study is to evaluate the diagnostic accuracy of MRI in patients with suspicion of pelvic masses. In gynecology, pelvic masses are considered among the most common disorders. Lesions of adnexal origin constitute one of the leading cause of female morbidity, a less common cause of mortality and a frequent reason for gynecologic surgery. The benign lesions are usually asymptomatic and most of the times they do not need any treatment and can just be followed up. On the other hand, malignant lesions usually need proper diagnosis and treatment. Pelvic masses pose a challenging situation to a treating gynecologist as well as a radiologist because of the broad and complex differential diagnosis. The most important thing that needs to be determined is categorizing whether the lesion is benign or malignant so that the patient gets appropriate treatment based on pathology. Determining the benign nature of the mass will save the patient from further investigations and unnecessary surgeries. Malignant masses need to be identified as early as possible so that the patient gets early and appropriate treatment. MRI, due to its excellent soft tissue contrast, large field of view, and multiplanar imaging capabilities, better delineates and characterizes normal pelvic anatomy and pathology. The aims and objectives of the study to, de to describe the MRI features of pelvic masses in determining the benign and malignant nature of uterine, cervical, and adnexal masses, to describe the accuracy of MRI in determination of pelvic masses, to correlate the imaging findings in histopathological correlation. Methodology, a cross-sectional study was conducted on 100 female patients with suspected various pelvic masses taking consent. All patients underwent MRI results of MRI were correlated with operative or histopathological findings. The study includes patients referred to Department of Radio Diagnosis, MNR Medical College and Hospital with clinical suspicion of pelvic masses and incidentally detected pelvic masses on ultrasound. Inclusion criteria. Patients with clinical suspected cases of cervical, uterine, adnexal, and fallopian tube masses. Patients with incidental detection of cervical, uterine, adnexal, and fallopian tube masses on ultrasound. Patients of all age groups will be included in the study. Exclusion criteria. Patients with metallic implants, cardiac pacemakers, cochlear implants. Patients who are claustrophobic. Patients who are unwilling for imaging. Patients who do not undergo treatment. MRI of pelvis was done on 1.5 Tesla GE MR signal machine. The following sequences were performed as a part of MR evaluation. Axial T1, fast recovery, fast spin echo, sagittal T2, coronal stiff, axial 2D, fast imaging, employing steady state acquisition, coronal 2D, fast imaging, employing steady state acquisition, and diffusion rated imaging. Contrast agent was used in patients whenever required for better tissue delineation. The results are enumerated below. Age of the patient below 32 were 22 subjects with a percentage of 22%. 31 to 40, 46 subjects to the percentage of 46%. 41 to 50, 16 subjects of 16 per percentage. 51 to 69 subjects of 9 percentage. 61 to 77 subjects, 7 sub percentage. The table shows the maximum number of cases were in the age group of 31 to 40 years and the minimum number were in the age group of 61 to 70 years. Based on the MRI diagnosis, fibroid shows the 46 percentage. Fibroid with malignant transformation is accounts for 1 percentage. Serous cystadenocarcinoma, 3 percentage. Adenomyosis, 3 percentage. Carcinoma cervix 6%, dermoid 3%, endometrial abscess 1, endometrial polyp 5%, hemorrhagic cyst 8%, hydrosalpings 1%, mucinous cystadenocarcinoma 3%, pelvic abscess 2%, right hydrosalpings 3%, serous cystadenoma 7%, serous papillary cystadenocarcinoma 1%, endometrial carcinoma 1%, and a simple cyst 6%. The maximum 
are from pi are, are the cases of pi droid on hpe correlation the mri diagnosis has correlation with the hpe correlation which showed pi droid as up to 45 percentage on mri 85 percent of the lesions were diagnosed as benign and 15 percent of the lesions were diagnosed as malignant of the 100 correlation of mri with hpe the p value is less than 0 0.0101 malignant 13 benign 1 benign malignant 2 benign benign 84 the sensitivity is 86.6 percentage Specificity 98.8 percentage, PPV 92.8 percentage, NPV 97.6 percentage. The accuracy is 97 percentage. MRI showed an overall sensitivity of 86.6 percentage, specificity of 98.8 per diagnostic accuracy of 97 percentage in comparison to histopathological findings. Here is an image of T2 coronal left hydrosalpings. And the other one is a serous cystadenoma. These are the images of dermoid. This is a case of adenomyosis. This is a case of fibroid in sagittal, coronal, and axial views. Pelvic masses may vary from benign masses like functional cysts to malignant ovarian or cervical cancers. Ultrasound and CT MRI are currently available imaging modalities used alternately to evaluate the pelvic masses. MRI should be used for characterization of ovarian masses when ultrasound results are intermediate or equivocal. On MRI, 85% of the lesions were diagnosed as benign, 15% of the lesions were diagnosed as malignant. In comparison with the gold standard test, that is histopathological examination of the specimen obtained from the laparotomy or laparoscopy of uterine and cell masses, the sensitivity, specificity, accuracy of ultrasonography in diagnosing malignancy in the present study was 73%, 94.1% and 91% respectively. The sensitivity, specificity, accuracy of MRI in diagnosing malignancy in the present study was 86.6%, 98.8% and 97% respectively. For each imaging modality, a cancer was considered to be depicted successfully. True positive, it is appeared to be suspicious for a highly suggestive of malignancy with that modality. These are the references. Thank you.